This morning, like I said, we are starting a brand new sermon series titled Hope in the Darkness. Okay, Hope in the Darkness. If you have notes, you can write that down. Again, this will be a five-week series, and I am extremely excited about this. Part one of this series is titled Hope on the Mountain. Okay, Hope on the Mountain. And I want you to truly know that we're living in a society right now. America is built with so many different cultures that defines what this nation is is starting to become. And through every single one of these cultures, it seems like the only thing that they have in common is that they're trying to bring darkness upon everyone's life. And what I want to do today, but not just through today, but through the remaining of our five weeks together is that no matter what you're facing, no matter what darkness you're going through, no matter the trials, the tribulation, no matter the mountains that you have to face, there is always hope to be found. There is always hope to be found in the midst of any darkness, in the midst of any sorrow, in the midst of any trial, there is hope. And it's waiting for you. Just like on the title of that devotion book, it says that we, that God is more eager to answer than we are to ask. And so one of the challenges through this series is to ask God because he is eager to answer and to meet our requests. So again, there is hope. Amen? How exciting is that for us, that there is hope in the midst of what we are facing in our everyday life, personal maybe in our marriage, maybe finances, but there is always a space where hope can be found if we seek for it. The Lord says, knock, and the door will be open. Ask and you shall receive. Seek God while he can be found, amen? And so through this part one, Hope on the Mountain, we're gonna be examining Abraham and his life and some things that he had to deal with even though Abraham, Abraham himself did not find darkness in his spirit, but when we look at the situation, it's a situation kind of of darkness. When God asked him to, to basically, he, he challenged Abraham's faith in Christ, God, or in the Lord. God challenged Abraham um, in his hope in the Lord. And the ending of the story is absolutely amazing. But we're going to be going to three different places. We'll be in Genesis, and then we're going to jump over to Romans But in Genesis chapter 15, verses 4 through 6, if you have your Bibles or your phones, you can please turn there. Genesis 15, verses 4 and 4 through 6. And so I I actually started using this different Bible or this different app for my sermons. And so today's a test run on how this app really works. So, um, Genesis 15, verses 4 through 6, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your flesh and blood will be your heir. Verse 5, it says that he took him outside and said, Look up at the stars, or look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. It says, then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. So that was an amazing promise from God that God gave to Abraham. Abraham, I want you to step out of your house. I want you to look up at the sky, and I want you to count the stars, if you can. Several, several months ago, I even think it was last year I preached, uh, it was a two-week series called Indescribable. And it says that if we were to count the stars just in our solar system, one per second, it would take like over 2,000 some years to count all the stars just in our little galaxy, our little solar system. And God challenges Abraham and says, I want you to go outside and look up in the sky and try to count the stars And as you see the stars in the sky, that is how your descendants are going to be. 
So Abraham has this picture. He has this piece of this much larger puzzle that God is trying to show him. And it says that Abram, this is before he had a name change, that Abram believed the Lord and the Lord credited to him as righteousness. And we have to understand that when God gave this promise to Abraham, he was old. He was not young. He was not in his prime. He was not 20s or 30 years old. He wasn't 40. He wasn't 50. He wasn't 60 and 70 because that's still the prime of your life. Amen. For the 60 and 70 year olds, praise God. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. Look at Millie. Praise God. But then we skip over to chapter 22. So God has given Abraham this amazing promise. That Abraham, you are going to be a father of many nations. But then we know that Abraham has a son named Isaac. And in Genesis chapter 22, verse 1 through 2, it says, Sometime later God tested Abraham. And he said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then the Lord said, take your son. I want you to hear this. Take your son. I think a, a few things in this story I think we overlook a lot of times. Take your son, your only son whom you love. What does that sound like? The Lord. John three sixteen. You see, God is never going to ask you to do something that he himself is not willing to do. God is never going to ask you to sacrifice something that he himself would not be willing to sacrifice. And so you, all the way back to the beginning of time when the fall of man happened, God prophesied that he was going to have to send his son to this earth because he tells the serpent that, because of what you did, I am going to send someone, and it is basically going to have a battle with you and your offspring. And it's going to be a battle between yours, you and your offspring, and hers and her offspring. It says you will strike his heel, but he will crush your head. And so years before this happens, God is prophesying that that he is going to have to already send his son before he even tells Abraham, Abraham, I want you to take your only son, the son whom you love, Isaac, and I want you to go to the region of Moriah. I want you to sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine God promising you being a father of many sons and then the one son, your only son that you have, God says, now this is what I want you to do. I know I promised you this, but now I want you to take your only son and I want you to sacrifice him on the altar of God. I could not imagine having that conversation. I could not imagine having that conversation. But I want us to think about our lives for a moment. How many times have God asked us to sacrifice something, but we have not been obedient because we felt like it was not the right time in our life to sacrifice whatever it is God was asking us to sacrifice? What was it? What if it was a friendship that God said, hey, I need you to sacrifice this friendship for a season? so that you can focus on me, so that you can hear my voice a little bit clearer? What happens if it's a relationship? What happens if it's finances? Hey, I need you to, I need you to, to step out in faith here and sacrifice a little bit. You see, one thing that we are going to understand through this story, that if we provide the obedience God will always provide the sacrifice. If we provide the obedience to what God is asking and calling us to do, God 
will provide the sacrifice. And that exact statement that God will provide the sacrifice is exactly what we are getting ready to hear Abraham say to his son Isaac. So again, in Genesis 22, verses 3 through 5, it says early the next morning, there was no question. Abraham did not question God. But he knew that this was going to be a difficult challenge. But he knew, even knew in the midst of this challenge that he could still find hope. In the midst of this darkness that the world was probably perceiving it as, he was still able to find darkness even though God asked him to sacrifice his son. And it says that early the next morning, Abraham got up and he loaded up his donkey and he took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. He couldn't leave Isaac behind. That wouldn't be good. So he made sure he had two servants and he made sure he had Isaac with him. And he said, when we had cut enough wood, when he cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. On the third day, Jesus rose. On the third day, God was about to provide a sacrifice. Abraham said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. So he saw the mountain. The mountain wasn't very far off. And listen to what Abraham said. In the midst of the darkness, in the midst of climbing this mountain of despair, Abraham says, we will worship. So he's looking at his servants and he's saying, stay right there. Me and the boy are going to go a little bit further to the top of the mountain. When we get there, we are going to worship. But then listen to what he says. We overlook this so many times. He says, and then we will come back to you. He already knew that God's promise was going to be fulfilled. Even in the midst of the darkness, he was able to find hope. He says, we are going to go to the top of this mountain that God said that I have to sacrifice my one and only son, the son that God promised me, but we are going to return. We are going to return. It says that Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and he placed it on his, and he placed it on his son Isaac. So I want you to get this. We have to understand that the, the story of God and Jesus and the story of Abraham and Isaac, go so, so, they go so much together. It says that Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on Isaac. So Isaac was carrying the wood that he was going to be sacrificed on. Jesus had to carry the wood that he was going to be sacrificed sacrificed on for the redemption of the world. So Abraham's one and only son is carrying what he was about to be sacrificed on. And he carried, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. Isaac was carrying everything. Abraham wasn't carrying anything. Everything was placed on Isaac. It says, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood is here, and the knife, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? And 
And Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sacrifice, my son. And the two of them went on together. Now Isaac had no idea. We can read this, we can understand and have revelation of this just through these few verses. He didn't know what was going on. God, Dad, we, we have the wood. We have the, 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 the knife and, and the fire and, and, and everything to make this altar for a sacrifice to happen, but I don't see a sacrifice. The only thing that I see is you and me. So things in my mind are not adding up. But Abraham had enough faith and had enough hope in the midst of the darkness to say that God himself, my son, will provide the sacrifice. All you and I have to do is provide the obedience. And I think that's what God wants every single person in this church and every single person that's watching, watching online, that if you provide the obedience to what God is asking you to do, to what God is calling you to do, God is going to provide every single need that you have. That if you are obedient, God will be faithful. That is God's word. If God does not stick to his word, God will be a liar. And our, our God, our Father in heaven, is not a liar. If God asks us to do something and we are faithful in what he is calling us to do, God will provide everything that we need in order to fulfill what he is asking us to do in the very moment. So it says, when they reached the place that God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and he arranged the wood on it. He bought his son Isaac, and he laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Now, could you imagine what's going through Isaac's head? Like, I mean, come, I mean, let's, let's be honest. If my dad was taking me up a mountain, and he was building this altar for a sacrifice, and he picked my 210-pound self up and laid me on the altar, I'd be like, what are you, you are crazy. What are you doing? Now, you think you said God's going to provide the sacrifice I'm your son. What do you, what's the problem? Did I make you mad? Did I, did I not take out the trash when you asked me to do so? Like, what's up? Amen. And so he says that he bought his son. He brought his son and he bound him up. He tied him up and laid him on top of the altar. Then he reached out his hand. And he took the knife to slay his son. So the knife was up. He was about to go through with what God had asked him to do. He was about to be faithful. If you'll be faithful in little, you'll be faithful in much. He was about to be obedient. He knew all I have to do is obey the, or all I have to do is, is provide the obedience and the faithfulness. And in, in, this, in the midst of this tragedy, God promised me to be a father of many nations, to be a father of many sons. But yet here I am about to slay my son on the altar of God. He's about to go through with it. But right before he brings his hand down to sacrifice his son, the angel of the Lord peels back the heavens, and this is what he said. He called out from heaven, and he said, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham responded, here I am. The angel of the Lord says, do not lay a hand on this boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Now I know that you fear God. There are going to be times in your life where your obedience in the eyes of the world is going to look absolutely crazy. But the question is, are you willing to look crazy in the eyes of the world in order to gain your spiritual freedom? 
Are you willing to stand with God and be judged by man or be judged or stand with man and be judged by God? Abraham was willing to stand with God and be judged by man. I mean, you could see the mountain in the distance, it says. And so I'm wondering, is it even possible that the servant saw what was going on? Because the servant stopped where Abraham said stop. We can see where we need to go. And so I'm wondering in my mind, were, were the servants like, did Abraham just snap? Like, what is going on? He's about to sacrifice his only son who he, whom he loves. But listen to what God does, how God was faithful. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket, he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over, and he took the ram, and he sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. If you provide the obedience, God will provide the sacrifice. If you can find hope in the darkness, you will see that God is always faithful. That God is always faithful. So I want to talk about this story. And, and so Abraham is, is made a promise Or God had made a promise to Abraham that I'm going to give you a son. Abraham gets his son. And now he has to go sacrifice his son. But one thing that I want you to know is that in our lives, we are going to have to climb many, many mountains. We are going to have so many storms that we are going to have to navigate through. We are going to have so many trials and tribulations that we are going to have to fight our way through. There are going to be so many valleys that we are going to have to crawl through. But one thing that I want you to understand about Abraham is that as Abraham was walking up one side of the mountain, as Abraham was, was wondering, God, what is about to happen? As Abraham was going with his son, the answer was coming up the other. As Abraham was going up one side of the mountain, the provision of God was going up the other. And Abraham's obedience met with God's faithfulness. Abraham's faithfulness met with God's provision. And in that moment, we can see the love and the fear that Abraham had toward God. And God is saying, all of this, Abraham, was just a test. It was all just a test. There are things that you are going through right now in your life that is just a test. It is just a test. And if you can be obedient and if you can be faithful in the middle of this darkness that you feel like you are walking in, at times when you're in a dark room and all the lights are off and the door shut and you can't even see your hand two inches from your face, can you still persevere? Can you still climb the mountain? Can you still provide the obedience in the midst of the darkness? Can you still provide the love for God in the midst of the darkness? Can you find hope? In the darkness. Romans chapter 4, verse 18 through 19. This is against all hope. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him so shall your descendants be. And it says, without weakening his faith, or we could even say without weakening his hope, he faced the fact that his body 
was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old. And that Sarah's womb was almost dead. So in the midst of all of these trials, his hope in Christ was not weakened. But it was actually made stronger in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the tragedy of having to sacrifice his son, he still found hope in the Lord. And that is what God wants you to hear this morning, is that there is hope on the mountain. You keep walking up the side of the mountain. And God's word, God, every single thing in this word, in God's word, is breathed and inspired by him. And if you would just keep walking up the mountain, God's promise will meet you at the top. But it's going to require something. But this story goes so much with what God and Jesus had in store for the world. But here's the thing about God. God did not stop when his hand was up. God didn't stop. God came down and he sacrificed his son for the redemption of the world. So that you and I could have freedom in Christ. Because God knew that it was going to take a spotless lamb, a perfect sacrifice in order to restore the fallen state of humanity. And God proved his love because yet we were, we were still sinners. Christ died for us. And God is never going to ask you to do something that he himself is not willing to do. God is, God is never going to ask you to sacrifice something that God himself is not willing to sacrifice. He already knew God already knew when he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. He knew hundreds and thousands of years later that he was going to do what he, had, what he asked Abraham to do. But here's the difference. He knew that he wasn't going to stop. That he was not going to stop. And the thing about God as well is that in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10, it says that it brought joy to God's heart to crush his son. Is that it brought joy to God to crush his son. This is exactly what it says. It says, but it was the Lord's good plan. It was his good plan. To crush him and cause him grief. And Jesus was obedient even to death on a cross. Because the joy that was set before him, and what was that joy? You. Because he knew through his suffering, through his death, through the anguish, through this good plan that God had orchestrated from the very beginning, he knew that we would be able to have eternal life with him. He was able to find hope. Jesus was able to find hope in the midst of the darkness. And like I said, I know that so many of us are struggling. Some of us right now are living in such a dark place to where we have lost all hope. We, we don't see any joy. We, we feel like that we are hopeless. We feel that there's no way out. We feel like there's no way for us to defeat the darkness that we're in. But if you will have a positive perspective that what I'm going through, what the enemy means for evil, God is always going to turn around for the good to those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Amen? Stand with me.